to slowing down our heat a little bit. While we're browning, I'm going to come over and get our next ingredients ready. For the chicken savoy, we need some onions or shallots. Shallots are a nice um, finer item than onions, and when they're available and they're nice and plump like we have them today, I like to use those in place of onions. We've peeled these, and I'm simply quartering the shallots. They're going to get added to our pan, and we're going to heat them and do what's called sweating them. We don't want to color them. I think that'll be adequate for the chicken savoy. We need some garlic for the chicken scarparello. The name scarparello, as I said before, is a shoemaker style. And it really comes from the origins of being a dish that can be easily cobbled with few ingredients. Now I'm going to just smash these garlic cloves a little bit. I'm going to lay my uh, blade right on them and just give them a little bit of a whack. What this is going to do is to help to release some of the natural oils in the garlic. We don't want to chop this up too fine. So garlic and our shallots are all ready. We'll come over and take another look at our chicken. Just a hair more on the chicken. Can I have one of those measuring cups? Okay. I'm going to use this just to capture my oil that comes off the chicken. Just adjust my flames a bit. You can see the coloration on the chicken. We're certainly not over colored or burnt. Now I'm adding the shallots to the pan. Again, we don't want to brown the shallots up too much. We want them to kind of sweat down and become tender. People ask me all the time, how do you know when the onions are tender? I tell them they become a bit translucent. They look a little bit limp in the pan, so we want to just saute those around a bit. Now we're working on the chicken savoy dish. We'll do these one at a time from this point so we don't confuse anybody. Just to recap a bit, we disjointed our chicken. We took the pieces, now we cut it in eighths. We took the pieces and dredged them in a little bit of seasoned flour, seasoned with salt and pepper. We quartered some nice shallots. You can use some nice small onions if you have them. We sauteed the chicken skin side down first, coloring it nicely, and then turning it over and coloring the opposite side in a little bit of olive oil. I always like to use a very good brand olive oil. I don't like to saute in extra virgin olive oil. I reserve extra virgin olive oil for salads and dishes where I'm going to use it as a final uh, pouring on the top just for a seasoning or something to be like a final liaison. Our shallots are starting to get a bit wilted. We want to keep them moving around every once in a while. We pulled the chicken back out of the pan. We removed a little bit of the oil and then the shallots went in. And here we are up to this point. We'll get ready now with some balsamic vinegar to deglaze the pan. If you remember, I said those nice brown bits that you see in the bottom of the pan, and down in the bottom in the center, you can see a few of them. They're the essence of the chicken that has reduced and caramelized on the bottom of the pan. 
we want to unlock those from the bottom of the pan, adding a little bit of liquid. We reduce with water, wine, or some other type of liquid such as stock, or in this case, we're using a balsamic vinegar. I am using a nice balsamic vinegar that actually comes from Greece. I am going to shut the flame off just for a minute while I do this so we don't get any flare up with the balsamic vinegar. You'll notice as I put the balsamic in, there'll be a big steaming effect. That's actually helping to unlock those brown bits off the bottom surface. As you do this, the glazing process, you always stir the bottom of the pan. This way we get all of those brown bits incorporated back into the sauce. I have some demi-glaze here. Demi-glaze is a product that's made by making a very fortified stock and then reducing it down until it has almost a sauce consistency. And you can see this, how rich it is and how dark in color. This is made from a roasted chicken stock. Once this balsamic reduces down a bit, I'm going to add my demi-glaze. I think we're just about at that point now. Demi-glaze is one of those products that you can make an instant sauce in minutes, providing you have it on hand. A little bit of some dried oregano. Chicken Savoy is actually a dish that they believe is one of the um, real New Jersey regional dishes. Created at a place in Newark called the Belmont Tavern by a chef named Stretch. It's a wonderful dish that has a nice acidic bite to it and um, this nice syrupy glaze over the top. This is uh, my rendition of Chicken Savoy. There are dozens of uh, different recipes out there. In fact, Arthur Schwartz has two different ones on his website that he's gotten from different people. Take our chicken. Any juices that come into the dish as we're letting that chicken sit, we want to get right back in that pan. Now I just want to take my chicken and coat it nicely. This is a very, very simple dish, and I like this because it's what we call pan to plate. You're only dirtying one pan, and in fact, if you use a nice saute pan, you can put it out on your table and serve it right from the same pan. All the cooking is done in the same pan, so it minimizes the cleanup. You can see how these chicken pieces are getting coated nicely. You have to gauge the size of your pan when you're making this so that your chicken is laid out just on one layer. We don't want to overload the pan. I'm going to add just a little bit more of my demi-glaze in here before we put the lid on. Now we're going to lower the heat down and put a cover on this, and we're going to let this go for about 10 minutes. Okay, back to the chicken scarparello. I'm going to remove some of the oil from my pan here so we don't have too oily of a dish. Flame back up. Now we need to add that garlic that we smashed. Give that pan a second to come back up to heat. 